Alright children, have we all got our copies of Warhammer 40,000's best ever expansion, Cities of Death? Yes? Oh, fantastic. Alright, if everyone could just turn to all of the amazing pages! This utter madness is sponsored by Squarespace. More on them in a bit. Today, we begin another journey of insanity here at Zorbasov. We're going bigger. We're going more modular. Welcome to Hive City Zorbasorb. I love Games Workshop terrain kits. There, I've said it. Yes, they're insanely expensive, especially now, but man, are they gorgeous. And this book right here, this shit changed everything for me. It taught me how to kit bash, how to experiment with new ideas, hell, it even taught me how to make YouTube videos. Hey there, guys. But most importantly, it gave me a dream, the ultimate Hive City gaming board. There is so much incredible artwork out there that really captures the claustrophobic, towering, daunting, and frankly horrifying aesthetic of an Imperial Hive world, but we so rarely see it on the table, because it seems like a pretty unachievable project. So today, we're beginning the journey to not just build yet another stupidly massive project here at Zorbazorp, but to explore, as always, how to use good design to make it incredibly modular, incredibly versatile, and above all, amazing for gameplay. For Kill Team, Warhammer 40k, and the Horus Heresy. With the release of Kill Team very soon, we've got the perfect short-term goal to kickstart this project and get our build underway with a few city blocks that really explore the main features of the whole build. If I can sum up this board in two words, it would be modularity and verticality. We're talking two feet high buildings, gangways, platforms, fighting a battle across skyscrapers high above the ground, and all of it completely magnetized to allow a million different layouts and even fully destructible terrain. Now, oddly enough, we're actually going to start with the buildings themselves rather than working from the ground up. So, I've sorted through every single piece of GW terrain I own, including three Imperial sectors and a handful of the newer kits to assemble an absolute horde of bits to begin Hive City Zorbazorp. Up first, we're going to use the newest iteration of the Sector Imperialis that was released alongside the last edition of Kill Team and features a very tall, gothically arched aesthetic, with each level 5 inches high. To work with, I've got the bundle from the starter set and I grabbed one extra Administratum kit. To begin, I needed to decide on the footprint for the floor plan. I'm going to conceit this consistent through the levels in this structure and decided to make it symmetrical for added modularity, allowing me to spin pieces to change the facings of doorways and balconies later on. Inspired by a half-constructed building I already had, I decided on two overlapping squares, creating some nice lines of fire and cutaway corners which saved those precious, precious floor tiles. I had to rip up a whole bunch of the old structure because I'm going to be assembling all of these buildings in a unique manner where the floor tiles are glued to the bottom of each level and not to the top. This will allow me to pull levels off and still have the models inside the building surrounded by their walls, perfect for filming and for gameplay. I clipped off all of the new on sprue pieces and I also carefully cut out all of the doorways so we can have some lovely open gameplay and then assembled a rough plan of all the levels on the bench and I have to say I am super proud of the incredible optimization of this particular building. I might have got a more complete structure from this kit than anyone else on earth. GW, they're all like, here's a zillion short ruins which are completely useless because we never give you enough floor tiles. Do you think I'm going to take that line? down. Oh, I don't think so. I managed to combine a bunch of the ruined walls by inverting a second set and hacking some window frames and columns down until they tessellated to make a complete wall which featured an amazing crack through the middle, looking like some huge energy weapon had just scored this wicked gash in the ferrocrete. Now they have a solid top and bottom so they can take the space of a full wall section, allowing me to keep building on the levels above. Checkmate, GW. As I bent this kit more and more to my will, I often wielded the razor saw, cutting columns in different places to optimize all of the different wall pieces. I glued together the floor tiles for the first floor and then dry fitted that down into the lower level as I assembled the last of the walls to make sure everything was square, but I kept the tiles removable. Then, with our first floor complete, it's time to work on the upper levels, and now we have the benefit of the floor tiles as a base, which makes building our wall sections just that much easier. I started with the upper floor plan 
so I could quick reference what the top of the new walls were doing and ensure I had solid and ruined walls in the right places and threw together the pieces in the same manner as the first floor. The third level is where things get interesting, as this is our first level with doorways out into nothing. These are going to be our entry points for gangways connecting to other buildings. I kept them central and the exact positioning of doorways is going to be very important later parts of the build when these buildings are affixed to a game board and the gangways will need to line up. Building up the final levels, I got the most mileage out of the floor tiles I could by combining lots of little pieces into large rims around holes wherever possible and carefully thinned out the cross section with more and more ruined pieces, finding a finishing point up at the very top and the final level is a much smaller cross sectional area and has no full length columns. These had all been required below and now it looks like this building was originally much taller but just got kaboomed. With the levels roughed out, I added some finishing touches by cutting up some spare pieces and adding in chunks of broken wall here and there to break up any repeating patterns where similar frames were used too often in close proximity, often using my blowtorch to help melt and warp the plastic. And then for now, our first building is finished. And what an impressive start indeed. But now it's time to return to the original Basilica Administratum kit for an even grander building. But first a word from today's sponsor, and it is a ripper. I've already been using this product for seven years, and without it, Zorbazorp wouldn't be here. I am, of course, talking about Squarespace. Now, Squarespace is a ripper website builder. I've used it to design Zorbazorp.com, where I have my full online store with all your terrain-making goodies, as well as some cool galleries and blogs of various projects. Squarespace has a fantastic inventory system, sales analytics, and designing your website is an absolute breeze. Simply pick a template and customize your specific pages by moving around the various blocks. I love it. So head over to squarespace.com to start your completely free trial. When you're ready to launch, use squarespace.com forward slash Zorbazorp to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Cheers to the sponsor Squarespace. Let's get back to the build. The size of the wall and floor components is much smaller in these old kits, which means two things. We can get a lot more levels for the same amount of height, but they also take an insane amount of assembly time. So careful planning is required. I mocked up my floor plans for this basilica and set to work building the lower foundation. Because I'm not gluing the floor tiles to the top of the walls as these kits are designed, the walls are super flimsy when they're freestanding, so I PVA'd them to a piece of foam board that I can remove later. I decided to take advantage of my surplus floor tiles and the many levels and create a tiered structure that decreases in cross section as it rises. This should create some great vertical gameplay options. The lowest level had a bunch of doorways and then the next level up was identical and pure windows just to get us some height and then things really get interesting. The shape now reduced creating the first terraces and also features the first doors into nothing which can become gangway access or balconies. I decided to quickly plan all of the cross sections moving upwards to get a good idea of where the levels were heading and then set about bringing in some wall pieces. Moving up to level 4 I kept the cross sectional area the same and had another gangway access here. This point is now the same height as two levels of the first kit so that should match up nicely. I decided from this point on that level 3 and level 4 of these old buildings would be really high traffic areas for our gangways and I would always build doorways at these levels on all buildings. The next level up reduced in size for the second time creating a nice wraparound terrace as the floor went from a 9 tile square to 4 squares and throughout these levels I conserved many of the intact floor tiles by combining broken pieces to make holes in the centre of the structure always lining them up next to a small hole in the wall as if some shell had penetrated the exterior wall and then fully detonated inside. There were lots of doorways in this piece which need to be cut open to ensure a flow of gameplay between the buildings and the gangways and all the terraces and balconies. A few more broken pieces at the very top and once again we have a fabulously ruined structure with a whole host of vertical gameplay options as well as quite staggering height coming in at 8 stories high. I cannot wait to get an unlimited range kill team sniper right up there in the top. The height really started to play on my mind though as I pondered the next build and I decided I wanted to try and make an elevator that units or operatives in a kill team could use to quickly traverse the large vertical distances. I'd used most of the basilica pieces so I switched to Sanctum Imperialis and used the lovely Aquila door frame and every solid piece I could find to make four hollow boxes which would make the start of the elevator shaft running up the centre of the building. I created a simple box shape with two cutaway corners for the floor plan 
and began working my way up the structure, once again with a doorway on the lower level, a repeated level above with pure windows, and then a reduction in cross-section on the third level with some doorways for gangways. Uniquely, this structure, because of the internal walls of the elevator, I had to glue certain floor tiles to the roof rather than the floor, but I always kept the large central floor space accessible as in the earlier builds. I had a lot less sanctum wall pieces than Basilica, so I got a bit clever and started including ruined versions in as well and pairing them with damaged floor tiles, and that gave the whole structure a lot of character. The first reduction in floor space created a lovely central chamber with balconies on either side, keeping the elevator rising so the units could get all the way to the top. The final two levels I actually built as one solid piece, bringing in some extra Basilica parts, and this was like a stately viewing chamber for the wealthy merchants above the paper pushing menials in the floors below. I was working with a few pieces from an old build that I could not for the life of me separate, so their fixed structure ended up inspiring a really cool final few levels with some extra doorways and balconies, creating a really interesting layout completely by accident. Even the elevator shaft started taking some damage as we rose up the building due to a lack of solid walls more than anything else, and I had this dream of actually somehow making this into a motorized mechanism and watching models rise up to the top. So if you want to see that madness, comment down below and I might think about it. I'm really pleased with this third building as I've managed to find a way to get a nice tall structure that isn't just a huge box and it's still visually interesting as well as being different to the other buildings and it's going to be excellent for gameplay. With the three main huge buildings done, that's all the big structures for this build so far, so I threw them onto the bench and started looking at layouts. Eventually, these will be affixed to the floor tiles and have a million different configurations, but for today, I decided on one layout to fully explore and test the gangway system. Once settled, I then spaced everything the appropriate distance to fit a city street between the buildings and then got to work on the gangways themselves. These are simple runs of floor tiles with the balcony balustrades on either side, and I quickly realized that these look a thousand times better if ruined pieces and big blasts have been taken out of the plasteel walkways. Make sure you get some strong bonds for these pieces, and because of the different dimensions of the new and old kits, I had to make some of the walkways walkways half a tile longer or shorter to get my three buildings to join up nicely. I made use of some of the leftover damaged window pieces and combined them together into a pillar to help create a dog leg for the gangways and then used a bunch of various buttresses and detail pieces to create supports that mount under the doorways to support the weight of the walkways and then, hey, Presto! We've got ourselves an elevated link between all our buildings, which, as I'm sure you'll imagine, is going to be vital if any of my models want to play The Floor is Lava. Now, one last step for today to really try and get a sense of how this project is coming together is to give everything a quick prime, and I started off by applying a dark grey all over it, and my god, it was amazing how much better everything looked once all those old paint jobs from Teenage Locky were dead and buried. I then grabbed a light grey and gave every single piece a spritz from above at about a 45 degree angle to give everything a quick zenithal highlight and it is amazing how easy this is and all of a sudden all of the detail is reading and the contrast profile is starting to be established. Up next I'll assemble the buildings and give it a final zenithal with white and then it'll be time to bust out the airbrush and start applying some filters to put a bit of colour into the landscape but that will all have to wait until next week. Now it's time to bust out some of my new toys, thank you Davey, and check out how this baby looks in the middle of a conflict. I'm really happy with this first step on this journey. I feel like I've established an approach that is going to yield some amazing results across an entire cityscape, although I might need to head to eBay and start hunting down some more terrain kits. I'm basically out of pieces already. And our next instalment, we'll be looking at magnetization of key joints as well as the layout of the city itself, beginning to design a modular tile system that is so much better than the Citadel Realm of Battleboards you saw in the intro, and that's going to allow us to build our buildings gorgeously into the floor, have a high level of scenic detail, and still be super modular. We've got painting, weathering, battle damage, and so many builds left on this journey. There are some fun times ahead. A huge shout out to my Patreons for all of your support. You guys are absolutely amazing. If you want to join these amazing folks and help with the crazy builds or hang out in the Discord or all the other bonuses, uh, the link's down in the description, and I will see you guys in the next one. Lockie out.